there, welcome to Jersey Jim Fish. Jersey Jim here. So this is going to be the most exciting uh, movie on my channel. This is going to be how to make a blood worm bag. Well, why would you need to make a blood worm bag? To keep small fish from pecking your blood worms apart. As these things are, uh, what, the jumbos this year were 19, 18, or 19 dollars a dozen. And this size right here was, uh, uh, 13 I think kind of expensive to be thrown away so these are actually 10 year, ten days old these blood worms and they're still good um, just flipped them over in my fridge twice a day um, some of them uh, something in there is not smelling too good but maybe that was an older one uh, I don't know how to make a blood worm bag right so this stuff here is called uh, tool I think it's t-h-u-l-e it's um, a nylon mesh, a real fine nylon mesh. And this fine stuff here is sold in a roll. And the first stuff that I got is this uh, kind of coarser material. I kind of like the coarser material. It's a little bit easier to work with, but I just learned how to do this this year. So bear with me. I'm, I'm, I'm no good at this. Um, so you want to cut your, your tool into like six inch squares. These are probably five inch. And then uh, go ahead and take a few of these babies. I'm going to share with you some interesting facts about the uh, the blood worm while I'm doing this. And I'll probably do a couple of these. I, I don't actually need these. I'm done uh, fishing in fresh water. I don't need the bags uh, for fishing tomorrow as I'm going down into salt water. But yeah, maybe I'll bring them along just in case. Just in case. All right, so you put your blood worms in there, and probably one too many in there. Then uh, gather up this end here, and give it a twist, and you just look like that. And you kind of jam all those blood worms up into the end of the bag there, and you take some braid, and you take your braid. So go over the top here and run the braid around the bag. All right, probably like eight times. That's what I've been doing. That's it, eight times. Now, the knot. You can cut your braid and then just tie a couple, uh, three square knots in it. I had a fair amount of success with this knot. So you make a loop and then split the loop and then pull that part in twice. See that? And then your bloodworm bag goes through this side, right? So we went through that side, and then we're just going to dip it through this side as well, and then tighten it down. That's it. Nice and tight. Right now, that is the bloodworm bag, um, and that is suitable for fishing as is when the pesky little varmints are, are really really rambunctious and they keep biting through the the tool and emptying out your blood worms if there's catfish in the water they have a tendency to to bite the bag and uh, shake the worms loose so I've been doing it twice and again eight times or so hold it from the other side make a loop Divide the loop, go through twice, just to like that, and then through that, and through that. Pull it tight. That's that. That, my friends, is a bloodworm bag. Cut off the excess and carry this out. You know, like I'm in my studio right now, which uh, smells like bloodworms, but uh. If you're in the field, you carry it, you put this in your bag, you put it in your pocket, you put it somewhere, you carry it out. You carry it in, carry it the F out. Alright, so how to fish these things. And this this is not the only way to make these things. I, you know, I've seen other guys use, uh, they didn't use the braid, they had some kind of rubber, like fabric-y rubber band looking material. I forget what it was called, but that seemed very convenient. You didn't have to tie a knot in it. Um, 
and uh, yeah, not the be all end all, just the way that I've been doing it. Um, that's kind of a small hook, but you just put it basically through the hook like that, right? Just like that, and that's it. You can run one or two up the hook, they last a long time. Uh, some of the guys that I've talked to have actually taken uh, like a, a needle or what I was doing was using the the legs of the Sputnik weight and after this gets washed out after 20 minutes or so you uh, reel it in you can put another bag on you can tear this one off or you can just jam the, the sharp end of the Sputnik leg through the bag a few times and that gets it bleeding again it seems to help out but uh, anyway, um, the blood worm. So I've been going to the tackle shops asking uh, what they know about the blood worm. And most guys don't really know too much about it. So I did some digging. And here's what I found out. It's actually pretty interesting. The blood worm is harvested in May and in north uh, on the northeast coast in muddy environments and uh, you know, like these tackle shop owners I was asking them what do they eat where do they live how are they harvested their season for you know just all kinds of questions yeah they're harvested in Maine that's the only thing that people could tell me um, so I'm gonna clean this up real fast and I'll share that information with you momentarily stay tuned it's gonna be awesome Some twisted meatball right there. So the blood worm gets its name from having a uh, hemoglobin in its blood. Uh, they live in shallow lagoons, mud, and sand flats and are effective predators. They feed by extending their proboscis, proboscis, proboscis. And proboscis. They, they, they have that thing that shoots out. I'll put a, an image of it or a video of it here, uh, which has copper based jaws. It has crystalline copper teeth. Yes, it has copper teeth. You heard me correctly. The, uh, the, cop, the high copper content in these worms is thought to be used in conjunction with a hemotoxin that is produced by the blood worm as well. The hemotoxin and maybe the copper is uh, used to attack prey and a hemotoxin, it, it stops the heart of the prey. Um, and I've heard tale of this, but I wasn't able to uh, uh, validate or substantiate the, the idea that I was told that it has in its... Uh, in its, I guess, throat, you would say, it has um, a lance that it shoots out. So it'll grab you with these four teeth, and then this lance shoots out, and that's what injects the uh, the venom, which uh, they are very effective predators, very terrifying predators. Uh, this, I'll put some footage of this one here, which is absolutely hideous. The, uh, the, the blood worms actually will bite a human. I've been bit by them. Uh, it, it's more alarming uh, than anything. It's not painful necessarily. Um, however, people can have allergic reactions um, similar to like a bee sting. Like a bee sting hurts way worse than, uh, than these things, but you can have an allergic reaction the same from the blood worm as you can from a bee sting. So some people are quite allergic to them. The uh, blood worm is from a larger family known as polychaetes. Now the polychaete family all have these bristly hairs on their, uh, their lateral, on their sides. They use these bristly hairs to dig through the mud. They, they, they use them for locomotion, uh, to swim, to dig, to crawl. And these parapodia, they're called parapodia, 
uh, these appendages are made from a substance called chitin and chitin is actually uh, it's harder than steel all right it exists in primarily in the insect world uh, but a few of these uh, blood worms annelids and some other organisms have it uh, the reason it needs to be harder than steel is because silica silica is a very very abrasive substance so for instance the uh, the grasshopper or locust eats vegetation and within the cells of the within the cell walls of the uh, the, the, the plant uh, is crystalline silica and it would the crystalline silica has to be chewed by the by the uh, organism to extract the nutrients from the inside of the cell and it would normally wear down the mouth parts of anything softer than the chitin so it's kind of like a, a an arms race arms race between the plant and the animal and this is the pinnacle of animal mouth part design is the chitin so these parapodia are made from chitin uh, that was that that was what that long story about the grasshopper was about incidentally uh, chitin is has traditionally been used and is still available at for use as a fining agent in beer and what a fining agent does is uh, you mix it into beer that still has yeast suspended in it and yeast and other particulate matter uh, proteins and, and stuff and it will hasten the clearing of that beer it'll, it'll, so I think chitin is negatively charged or positively charged I forget which you put it in and it will cling on to the positively charged particles and make them fall out it'll, it'll increase the gravity of them and make them fall out faster really effective finding agent I, I was a big fan of it when I was making beer on a regular uh, but time will do the same thing you know I was in a hurry to make it back then and now I got not a care in the world I can make beer as slow as I need to but uh oh yeah I'm gonna put a, some footage of this thing here is called an Australian beach worm and you can see here they uh, they take a bag of fish racks and put it above the the receding waves and then as they see they see sign of these worms they put a shrimp in front of the uh, the worms face and they grab it with the pliers and pull it out these things are massive massive so apparently they're all predators they are all hideously effective predators and uh, yeah I think that's it that's that's all the notes I wrote down about the uh, about the blood worm I am interested in the blood worm if you know something that I didn't add that you know something about the blood worm that you didn't hear me talk about um, feel free to leave it in the comments I'd be uh, always interested to learn something though but anyway that's it that's the end of the uh, how that my most interesting movie on YouTube thus far how to make a blood worm bag thanks so much for watching have yourselves a wonderful day and uh as always cheers it, it's non-alcoholic it's non-alcoholic gotta get up early go fishing tomorrow morning i want to have a hangover so see you again real soon well, yeah Jeez, oh dude. my god, dude. Holy that's shit. A... That's about to... <laughs> 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 I got your rod. All right. Holy shit, Fred.